So I want to talk about what's happening um, in sexuality in college among heterosexuals. I want to give a, a descriptive portrait of what's happening these days in the what I call the hooking up culture and also what's happening with uh, relationships um, and show how patterns are still gendered. So let me tell you what data I'm basing this on. First of all, I've been collecting some qualitative data at Stanford University where I teach interviews of undergrads by undergrads, and I've also been doing focus groups in a class I teach on sex and love. And then I'm using quantitative data from an online survey of undergraduates. I now have about 18 public and private universities that the data are coming from, so I have a pretty big sample. And today I'll limit things to heterosexuals. So in the online survey, I asked about characteristics of people's most recent hookup and about characteristics of the most recent relationship that they had been in uh, and said for them to limit that to a relationship that lasted at least six months. Now, what do they mean when they say hookup? What the survey said was use whatever definition of hookup you and your friends use. And then I also asked about have you been in a relationship of at least six months while you were in college? And then I asked about the last time you and your partner did something beyond just kissing. So I'm calling that the most recent sexual event in this relationship. So you'll see reference to these uh, results from these questions. So first of all, what do they mean by a hookup? That is, what is sexually happening on what students call hookups? So this graph is telling you men's and women's reports of what they did on the most recent hookup. Now, I should explain how I'm categorizing things here. I have sort of a, if you'll forgive me, base system, as we used to say. That is, suppose that um, in my hookup, I made out with the guy, and there was hand genital stimulation, and we had oral sex, but we didn't have intercourse. So. I'm going to appear in the oral sex bar. In other words, you're classified by, on this hierarchy from left to right, the highest, not implying any value judgment, the highest thing you did. <laughs> so what you see here is that, you know, if you wonder, does hookup always imply they had sexual intercourse? No. Somewhere about 30, 40% of hookups involve intercourse. A quarter to a third only involve sort of making out and some touching and nothing genital and then you have these categories in between. I'll intersperse qualitative data throughout. FR means female respondent. Um, so this respondent, and the qualitative quotes are all from Stanford students, but remember all this quantitative stuff is from the combined sample of all these universities. So she says, all that happened was kissing and fully clothed action. I hooked up with him again. There was more sexual stuff, but not sex. So it's clear that when students use the term sex, they usually mean intercourse. This male respondent said, she was very happy to hook up, but actually having sex was going to really mean something to her. Some of these quotes are just so priceless. So are people hooking up with strangers? The answer to that seems to be not usually. Here's their answers to a question about how well you know this person that you hooked up with. Again, this is the most recent hookup. So, you know, it's less than 15% or so said not at all. Sometimes they know them very well. I mean, there's a distribution here. Now, one of the things I had to learn when I got into this was I was sort of assuming that every hookup was just, it only happens once with this person. But in fact, there are repeat hookups. So of this sample of most recent hookups, this is the distribution of how many times had you previously hooked up with the same person. And what you see is that 20% of them were 10 or more times, although fully half were we'd never hooked up before. So there's this kind of distribution. So hookups often involve alcohol. So if you look at men, at the mean, they had six drinks. For women, it's four. Asked, have you contacted this person since you hooked up? The vast majority of the men say yes. And actually, most of the women, too. Um, it's, it's over 65% of the women. It's higher for the men than the women, I think, because as you'll see in a lot of the later data, there seems to be this norm that men are supposed to be doing the initiating on everything, which seems to be still fully in force here. Now, some people have argued, and in fact, students will themselves often say this, that, well, now there's all this hooking up, and 
people don't date anymore. In fact, I started this whole research project. It's an odd way to get into a research project. Um, because when I was teaching at Northwestern, a student came to my office and said he wanted to do a senior honors thesis on why Northwestern students don't date. And I said, they don't? <laughs> and, and I was like, this was the beginning of my whole education. Well, it turns out he's wrong. Um, <laughs> they do somewhat, but here's what I think is going on. So first of all, there's this term, dating. When students say that, they're talking about already being in a girlfriend-boyfriend relationship, okay? It's the prearranged date, you know, like John calls Mary on Wednesday and says, do you want to go to a movie on Saturday or something? Do you want to go to dinner tomorrow night? That's what is much rarer than decades ago. And when students say, we don't date here, that's what they mean. These don't exist at all. But in fact, they do exist. Um, but they have declined, I think. Now, Anytime I start talking about trends in this talk, bear in mind, my data are only about now. And so I'm sort of speculating. You know, I sometimes fall into this bad habit of comparing it to what I think was going on when I was in college among my friends, which is always a very bad way to do social science. But <laughs> in the absence of data, we all slip into it. So today, first of all, dates sometimes come after you've hooked up with the person. And it's very clear to me that dates are sometimes now a way that one person, usually the guy, signals to the woman that he's interested in more than just her body, um, that he's maybe interested in a relationship. So in that sense, I actually think that today, if you get asked on a date, it is more indicative of a serious relational interest than it was, say, when I was going to college. But anyhow, so the date isn't dead, but hookups are more common than dates, although not by as big of a margin as you would think based on all this talk about the date is dead. Also, you might be thinking based on these hysterical media portrayals that you know the average kid's graduating from college having had 50 hookups or something, um, which in the old days wouldn't have been an uncommon number of dates, by the way. But in fact, if we take the median senior year, you know, it looks like it's somewhere about four to six or something, four to seven, something like that. So now, there's a lot of variation here. Something like a quarter of the kids never hook up, um, and some people have lots and lots, right? So there's, you know, this variation. So I said dating has this new meaning. So this man says, there's no such thing as casually going out to gauge the other person. You can hang out, but we're only dating once we've decided we want it to be in a relationship. So once I got into this research for a while, I realized, well, the really interesting question here is, how do they get to relationships? So here's what I think is going on. First, most hookups don't lead to a relationship. But many relationships came from a hookup. By the way, that would have been true about the date 40 years ago, right? Most dates didn't lead to marriage, but most marriages started with a date. Um, so it's kind of like that with hookups and relationships here. Sometimes there's romantic interest preceding the first hookup. Um, sometimes not. And then sometimes dates are coming in between the first one to N hookups and when it gets sort of defined as a relationship. So this uh, guy says, for a time it was a regular hookup and then we actually started getting attracted to each other and our relationship actually ended up happening. So this one sounds like the hookup was sort of casual sex. They hooked up multiple times and it kept being casual for a while and then interest in the relationship increased. This woman says, it tends to start with an interest there already, like chemistry. Then alcohol or the party setting helps people hook up. If they're really into each other, a series of hookups can lead to a relationship. So she's telling you more about this path where there's some interest before, but somehow, it, I think what has changed is the date isn't the common way you start playing out this interest. You know, it's, it's almost as if this, there's this whole other process that's going on about informalization, it seems like. And maybe like everybody's afraid about like revealing their cards because you have to be vulnerable. Something like that is going on, I think. So how do we know when we're in a relationship? Students talk about the talk. 
Sometimes they even call it a DTR, the define the relationship talk. And relationships become official, this is their term, or exclusive, implying relationships kind of imply monogamy, via a talk to define more clearly what's going on here. And this talk may come after a few hookups, a few dates, something like that. Um, so here's some examples. This guy says, she asked me if we were just friends or if we were more. I considered us to be more. I said I did. This woman says, I was initiating a lot of the, like, do you like me discussion. I think he might have been the one who initiated the let's actually do this. So, I mean, as you see, it's not like these are these serious, soul-searching, hour-long discussions about let's define the parameters of our relationship. You know, that isn't how it happens in real life. Um, this woman says, I wanted to see where I stood, but I didn't want to go, are we exclusive? So I was sneaky and said, if my friends were to ask what was going on with us, what should I tell them? <laughs> so I want to talk about ways in which this whole scene that I've kind of been describing is gendered. And there are four ways I'm going to talk about, and the first one is, is physical pleasure. So I ask people about this most recent hookup, did you have an orgasm? Do you think your partner had one? So if you just take all hookups, irrespective of what they did, 44% of men and 19% of women had an orgasm. Folks, this is worse than the sex gap in pay um, in terms of proportions, you know. Let's talk about orgasm rate in different contexts. So a first hookups, it's 11 versus 31. That's where, by first, I don't mean your first ever, I mean your first with this partner. If it's the second or third with this partner, 16 for the women, 43 for the guy. If it's the fourth or higher with this guy, this person, 33 for the women, 64 for the men. If it's a relationship of at least six months, 68% for the women, 85% for the men. So relationships are much better for women in terms of orgasm, but they're much better for men too. Now, part of this is people are doing more sexual stuff in the, in the higher order things. Um, but actually, even controlling for that, there is this tendency for things to be better in relationship. So why do we have this big gap, going back to hookups? So one reason is asymmetry in who's getting and receiving oral sex. So this is just the distribution of who received oral sex in hookups when it happened. So somebody got it, but there was not intercourse. So. 40% of the time both got it, it was reciprocal, but when it wasn't reciprocal, then it's wildly disproportionately men receiving. It does seem like a lot of the hookup is organized around giving men pleasure more than women, and that's one way in which this whole thing is really gendered. Here are some quotes about this. This woman said, he did that thing where they put their hand on top of your head, and I hate that, especially because there was no effort made to like return the favor. Um, so I think this is telling you, and there's several quotes in my data that say essentially this about this hand on the head thing. And I don't think it's that you know the guy is forcing her down to his penis. I think what's going on is people are awkward and they're not really talking about things and it's embarrassing to articulate what you want, but the guy's trying to suggest what he would like you to do and he's giving you the idea. Um, but she doesn't like it, um, especially when it's not reciprocal. This guy says, oh, the interviewer says, was it reciprocal oral sex? And the respondent says, no, I think a lot of times the girl does it because it's expected. This guy says, the female feels a little more protective of herself. They're not expecting, nor do they really allow themselves to be that open right away. And some women will say this too, uh, so I don't think it's just his delusional idea. <laughs> so here is um, some contrast of what sexual behaviors occurred in hookups versus relationships. So, I mean, you can see basically here people are doing more of everything in the relationships. They're having intercourse more often. The women are receiving oral sex way, way, way more. That's the uh, sort of middle bar, 22% versus 57%. They're also giving oral sex way more. They're having intercourse more. They're actually having anal sex more. It's interesting, 1% versus 7% of relationship events. 
and hand stimulation of genitals is going on much more both ways. So just a lot more is going on in these relationship events, but also there is less of this oral sex asymmetry. There's some, but less. So here's women's report of their own orgasm and men's report of their own, the men's orgasm, where things are classified, and this is in, just in hookups, um, where things are classified by what they did sexually, um, and this is in terms of the respondent's receipt. So the difference between the two bars under receive oral sex is if men get oral sex, they're having an orgasm 50% of the time, a little more, uh, women only 30% of the time. This is all hookups. If you had intercourse and did not receive oral sex, men are having orgasm about 65% of the time, women a little more than 30% of the time, etc. Now, by the way, one thing I think is worth remarking on here is we often tend to have this idea that, well, of course, men, if they're either having intercourse or receiving oral sex, are going to orgasm, you know, 99% of the time. Well, it's not here. It's not true here. Now, remember, some of these people have had 12 drinks. Um, <laughs> so they're young. They're maybe awkward. Um, so, you know. What about if we just take reports of the female orgasm? Given what they received, what percent of women report they had an orgasm? But the other bar is men's report of did their female partner have an orgasm? So the point here is men seem to be dramatically overestimating the extent to which their partners had an orgasm. I mean, they're either lying and they know they didn't or they just don't know. Um, Some combination of the two. I'm assuming that women are correctly reporting their own orgasm. No, that's an assumption. It seems a reasonable assumption. So why wouldn't guys know? Well, one reason is women faking orgasms. So this woman is saying, he orgasmed, I didn't. I faked it because I don't want to hurt his feelings. This woman says, no, faked it. I do that quite often. I think a lot of girls do. So I, I had instructed these undergraduates who were interviewing undergrad, other undergraduates to... Um, ask people, you know, did you have an orgasm? So it's in in, in response to that. This uh, male respondent's very upfront. He says, I don't think any hookup is based on mutual orgasm. I think it's just based on an orgasm for me. (laughs) I guess a consistent one would be based on mutual orgasm. If you go back to that transcript, you can see that what he means by a consistent one is a regular hookup with the same person. He doesn't actually mean a relationship. And this is an interesting point because it's very clear in the data um, that women orgasm more often if they're in a hookup with the same person four times than if it's the first time. So there is this partner-specific learning that goes on in hookups as well as in relationships. Well, some women are trying to seek their own pleasure. This woman says, he wanted me to go down on him, which I enjoyed. So I go to the bathroom and come back, and he's asleep. Next morning, I'm going to assert my wants. So I'm like taking his hand and trying to move it down there. And he goes for maybe 30 seconds and then stops and expects me to repeat the night before. I was like, I'm sorry. (laughs) So, you know, not all the women are just going along with this. It's, you know, for men's pleasure. Now, you might say, well, maybe women just don't care about orgasms. Um, In this paper I mentioned with Elizabeth Armstrong, we did some regressions predicting, did you have an orgasm in the most recent hookup? We also have regressions predicting, did you say you enjoyed the sexual aspect of this event? And if we put orgasm in that regression, the odds ratio is 10. So, I mean, in one sense, duh. But um, women are way, 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 way more likely to say they enjoyed it if they have an orgasm. In fact, this odds ratio is slightly higher for women than it is for guys. Um, So, um, you know, they do care about orgasm, even if their sense of entitlement doesn't always lead them to do things that prioritize it. So here you see, so although this is the enjoyment, the sexual activity enjoyment variable here that I was just speaking about, although women do say they enjoyed it much more if they had an orgasm, on the other hand, even though we know there's this big orgasm gap, when you compare men's and women's scores on how much they say they enjoyed the sexual activity in this event, I would say those two distributions are almost indistinguishable. 
in general, women are reporting about the same enjoyment level as men. It sort of reminds you, those of you in the room that are sociologists, of this um, literature about job satisfaction from years ago, and they were always trying to figure out how women have these crappy jobs, but they report just as much job satisfaction as men, so it must be a lower sense of entitlement, or your comparison group is other women or something. I think something like that's going on, that um, you know, women think, well, sometimes they like it, sometimes they don't, but this, this seemed pretty good compared to what they think is typically happening in this. Um, so both in asked how much did you enjoy the sexual activity and the hookup and the overall hookup, um, you know, both men and women say, yeah, oh, they liked it pretty much or somewhat most of the time. So what are women getting out of this if it's often not orgasm in the hookups? So I think sometimes it's male attention. This woman says it. Made me feel like I was cute. Boosted self-esteem. This woman says, the pleasure that girls receive from hooking up isn't like physical. And she's not exactly telling you what it is, but there's something there. All right, enough about orgasm and pleasure. Let's go on to who's initiating these things in hookups and, and dates and stuff. So about that most recent hookup, where you can see I just drilled them with a lot of questions about this one event. One question was, who initiated spending time with this person the evening of the hookup? Then we asked, who initiated the sexual activity in the hookup? And then people could say, you know, I did, my partner did, or we both did. And then, based on what their sex is, we've, you know, figured out these charts. So, basically, what you see here is that, especially for sexual activity, men are initiating a lot more than women. By either men or women's report, men are initiating much more, both the starting to talk and initiating the sexual activity. So another thing that's going on is when they go on dates, I asked who asked whom out on the date. Now here, by either men or women's reports, it's almost universally men asking women on dates. There is an attitude question in there. Do you think it's all right for a woman to ask a man on a date? 75% of men and women say yes. So they think it's fine for women to ask men on dates, but women aren't doing it. Um, so the male initiation is really um, still there. It's very interesting. I read this paper in, uh, recently by um, Sharon Sassler. It's a qualitative study of cohabiting partners. And she says that there's a strong norm that the men are supposed to propose marriage. So it's very interesting to me how much these norms that men are supposed to initiate stuff are still there, or at least behaviorally they're there. So then we asked if you're, so people in a relationship, we asked how did it become clear that this person was your boyfriend or girlfriend? So what you see here is that by either men or women's reports, the most common scenario was that the guy initiated a define the relationship talk. Sometimes the woman initiated such a talk, and then I love this, I just sort of knew is one of the modal responses. By the way, when I do focus groups and I ask students who initiates these DTRs, they say women do. They're all in agreement. Oh, the women want the relationships more and they initiate the talks. But of the ones that actually become relationships, that ain't true. Um, more about this in a minute. So another way that the culture of hooking up is gendered is the double standard. So when I talk in focus groups, students say women who hook up with too many people or go too far in the first hookup are seen as sluts. And the term slut is used a lot. And other terms like hoe, etc. Men can be seen as a man whore, and sometimes that's pejorative, but also male peer groups, you know, encourage and sort of give high fives for action. So it's really clear that, you know, reputationally, women are being judged by a different standard as men. And I have had guys say in focus groups that if a woman has sex with them on the first or second hookup, she's seen as less relationship or dating material. So, you know, it's like when I was 19, my mother was teaching me, well, you want to be a virgin at marriage because otherwise if you've had sex and then that doesn't work out and you don't marry that guy, another guy won't want to marry you. Well, this is kind of the shadow version of that, okay? Almost nobody except 
evangelical Christians is expecting virginity by marriage, but there still is this, what's too much? I love this quote. This male respondent says, I see some girls just wanting to hook up. The interviewer, who was one of my students trained by me, says, are they treated differently? So the guy says, they're called slutty. It's less stigmatic for a guy. There's still that kind of preserve the woman attitude or denounce them. A lot of times they go, there's no way I can date her, but she's hot for a hookup. So I think there's, I mean, on the one hand, there's a reasonable amount of acceptance that you might get in a relationship with a woman who's hooked up a few times with other people, but there still is this line, and you never know exactly where it is, that if you cross it, you're damaged goods a little bit, at least if people know about it. So we asked this question, have you ever hooked up with someone and then respected your hookup partner less because they hooked up with you? Now... A minority of men or women say yes, but more men than women say yes, 33 versus 23 percent. And then the right-hand side is, have you ever hooked up with someone and then felt that your hookup partner respected you less? So here we see more than half the women say yes to that, only about 20 percent of the men. So actually, women are more worried about it happening, perceive it's happened more than guys say they've done it, but by either account... Um, it's, it's a problem women are going to have happen to them more than men. So is relational orientation gendered? Um, in focus groups and quotes, as I said before, students talk as if women are more interested in relationships. That's why they think women are initiating more of the DTRs. Here's the attitudinal data that support it. About this most recent hookup, you were asked, how interested before the hookup were you in a relationship with this person? Then, After the hookup, how interested were you in a relationship with this person? So this is the percent of people saying, I was not interested in a romantic relationship. So whether you're talking about before or after the relationship, I mean, the basic movement is they lose interest over the hookup. But in both cases, more men than women are um, reporting that they're not interested. And these differences are like 40 versus 25. Up here, it's 46 versus 34. So they're not trivial. So it's certainly not, you know, all women are interested and all men aren't, but there is a gender difference in this report, at least. This uh, woman says, well, right now he calls me every day, and I'm trying to look positive for the future. Hopefully it's something more than a hookup. Here's a guy who says, I'm still interested in pursuing her in the purely physical manner, but definitely nothing emotional or romantic, where she might be more interested in something emotional or romantic. So I think it is somewhat true, and it is perceived by students even more dramatically than is the reality, probably, that the women are more interested in relationships. This woman says... I feel like it's the stereotypical girl thing to do. The guy feels like the girl's boxing him into a relationship, and I'm paranoid about seeming like that girl. If we continue to see each other, I probably will bring it up eventually. So she's scared to initiate a DTR because she doesn't want to seem like this um, boxing him into things. So my short conclusion. So we have this new social form, or relatively new, I don't know exactly when it started, um, in that something sexual precedes rather than follows dates or other expression of relational intent. But the gendering of this, it's new, but this new social form, the gendering of it seems quite as extreme as the gendering of the old dating and courtship forms. I mean, that would be the broad brush conclusion, lots of other things one could want to make conclusions about. And I think... I've been interested in, should we think this thing is good for women or bad for women? And it's always compared to what? You know, compared to the old system, I think it's unclear. In some ways, women are empowered. In some ways, maybe they're exploited more. I mean, we can maybe talk about that. So I suggest we do talk about it. Thank you for your attention. Mm -hmm.